Hallelujah. And that's what we want to talk about this, this morning. Just very brief, not a whole lot of things, because we're going to observe the Lord's Supper. But I want to talk about Christ, Jesus. Jesus is our God. And if he's not your God, you are not a Christian. And Jesus is our Savior. And if you're expecting to get to heaven any other way, you're not a Christian. For you must believe and accept by faith the truth that Jesus is the fulfillment of everything that the Old Testament prophets foretold. He is the embodiment of that perfect one. He is God and he is Savior. In Colossians chapter 1, in verse 13, the Bible says, He has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into, into the kingdom of the Son of His love, Woo in whom we have redemption through His blood, now, what does that mean? The forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the of the uh, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, and that in heaven and that are in heaven and on earth visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in Him all the fullness, all the fullness should dwell. And the, and the implication is the Godhead, the Trinity, Father, Son, in Him all the fullness should dwell. And by Him to reconcile all things to Himself, whether things on earth or things in heaven, having made peace through the blood of of his cross. Father, I ask you now in Jesus' name, fill me with your presence and your power. We're thankful for the people that are here today. Speak to every heart. Help every, every ear hear the whisper of the Spirit of God in their heart. Meet their needs right where they are and help them, Lord. Help us all to be more like you and less like ourselves. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. First of all, I want you to understand that Jesus is God. He's not a God. He is Almighty God. He is God. Uh, in Genesis 1-1, those first four words in the English, in the beginning, God. You see, that implies that God was there before anything else was. You see, God is eternal. In the beginning, God. And Jesus, we see from the passage of Scripture, uh, go back to verse 15 of, the, of Colossians uh, 1. Verse 15 says, He is the image of the invisible God. You see, Jesus was, uh, has always been, God the Son has always been, always shall be. He became a human being when He was placed in that virgin's womb. Did you hear what I said? Not when, he, when she gave birth, he became human. He became human. He added humanity to who he was the moment that holy seed was placed in the virgin's womb. He was identifying with us. And he is the image of the invisible God. God is pure and holy. To look upon him is to be consumed. To look upon him. Moses wanted to look and God said, you can't take it, son. Get in the cleft of that rock and I'll cover you up. And, and as I go by, you can see the afterglow. 
And boy, when he come down, he was shining like new money. They had to veil his face because he was in the presence of the true and living God, the holy God, the righteous God, and there's no other God. Allah is not it, and Buddha is not it, and anybody else you can think of is not it. Only one God, and he has manifested himself through his son. He is the image. Jesus is the image. You say, I, I want to see the Father. Look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. Look to him. I, I, want, to see, I want to see the Holy Spirit. Look to Jesus. See, the Father's spirit, uh, the Holy Spirit's spirit, Jesus was a spirit and became a man. So uh, you need to look to Jesus. He is the image of the invisible God. He is the one. He is the one. And I, I, I submit to you today that you need to make up your mind. Who is Jesus to you? Is he God or is he just a good man? I submit to you if he's just a good man, he's not even a good man. Because he lied to us when he said, before Abraham was, I am. Now, the Jews wanted to kill him when he said that because they knew exactly what he was saying. He's saying he is Yahweh. The I am, that I am, the one that Moses saw con with the Shekinah glory consuming that bush, but yet it wasn't burnt. That God who talked to him, and who, who should I say sent me, Lord? And say, tell him I am has sent you. And Jesus said that's who he was. I submit to you, he is God. There's no other God. There's no other God. But the true and living God, a triune God manifested to us in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the Father is, is in glory. Jesus is seated at his right hand. And the Holy Spirit is God upon the earth today. Who is Jesus to you? Is he God or is he a good man? Is he a, just another prophet? You know, uh, uh, Islam says he's a prophet, but he wasn't virgin born. He's a prophet, but he didn't die on the cross. He's a prophet, but he's not the son of God. Well, that's not the Jesus I serve and know and love and that I'm trusting to, to, for the forgiveness of my sin and to take me into glory one day. Is Jesus God to you? Better yet, is he your God on this Christmas Eve? Is he your God? I heard in these testimonies, and they, it was wonderful. I, I was just so happy to see those five people up there sharing from, from their experience. They knew about God. There's a lot of people know about God. Do you realize every great preacher down through time has pretty much said the same thing? I mean, whether it was D.L. Moody or Charles Spurgeon or, or, or Tozer or Vance Havner or, you know, John Rice or Bob Jones Sr. And you just go on back and all these, all these preachers down, even old, um, what's his name? Jonathan Edwards back in the 1700s. Uh, 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 John Wesley, the founder of the, the Methodist movement. George uh, Whitfield, who was a Calvinistic Methodist. Now, you're talking about a strange breed, but he was. And they all, all have been quoted as saying the same thing. Half the people I find in church know about God, but they don't know him. Now, you think about that. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say, well, you know him, but you just know about him. You know him, you just know about him. I'm not about to do that because I'm not God. I can't see the truth in your heart. I can't see. I, can't, I am not God. But I'm telling you one thing. If you're here today and you don't have it nailed down that you have truly been born again and your, blood, your sins are under the blood and your name has been recorded in the Lamb's book of life and, and, and you do that by grace through faith, you must believe. You must believe and be saved. And if you've not done that, you've not nailed it down, Listen, salvation is not, well, sign a card and get wet and we'll put you on our membership roll. That's not salvation. That is not salvation. Salvation is when you meet Jesus and he comes into your life and he changes you and you're never the same again. That's the Jesus I met.
Is he your God? Is he your God? Listen, God has enabled me to go around the world preaching the gospel. I have been into some situations that I was just a little bit, um, um, I really had to trust him. Well, why do you go out in dangerous places like that? Because Jesus is my God. And I've been called to share a message and to tell people. They might not look like me. Their, their skin might be a different color. They might speak a different language. Their hair might be jet black or, or as curly as it can be. It doesn't matter. Jesus died for the sins of the world and all humanity needs to have the offer just to let them know that Jesus loves you and died for your sins. Is he your God? Not only, is, not, not only that, now that, that, we're going to separate the men from the boys here, okay? Or, or the, the women of God from the, I don't even know, I'm, get out of that hole, here's my shovel. Not only is Jesus God, but Jesus is creator. Amen. Now, wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. Look at verse 16. For by him, what's that next word? All. Does all mean all? I kind of think it does, don't you? And by him, all things were created. You see, Jesus is the creator God. He is the creator God. Go back to Genesis 1-1, please. In the beginning, God what? Oh, well, there you go. Isn't that something? God is Jesus. And Jesus is the creator. Look at 1 John 1, 3. The Bible says all, all things were made through who? Speaking of Jesus, if you'll look at the context. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Speaking of Jesus, the Apostle John talking about Christ Jesus the Lord. All things were made through Him and without Him. What's that next word? Nothing. You know where you get the word nothing from? The word no and thing, and you put it together. No thing was made that was made. He made it all. Now, now, don't get bonkers on me. He's not the author of sin. He didn't make sin. He didn't make the devil. He made Lucifer, the son of the morning. And that jackleg rebelled, and he became the devil. That's what the Bible says. He never, he's not the author of sin, and he didn't make sin. He didn't conceive sin. He didn't author sin. But the father of sin, the father of lies, the deceiver, the, the stealer of the peace of the brethren, the disruptor uh, who wants to come in and damage every congregation, that sorry sucker is the one who, who brought us sin. I heard someone say, well, first sinner was Adam. No, it wasn't. first sinner was Satan. He was the first one. All things. Jesus is the creator. So I submit to you on this Christmas Eve. You know, we're, gonna, we're celebrating the birth of Jesus, and I'm not going to get in the long, drawn-out argument, well, Jesus wasn't born on December the 25th. Well, I know that. Everybody knows that, that can just do a little research. I forget the Pope's name that picked that date out, and I know why he picked it out. But I'm telling you, it doesn't matter that we don't have the day correct. It does matter that we acknowledge that he was born. Do you hear what I'm saying? He is God, and he is creator. He, he, is, he is creator. Uh, you know, there's, a, there's another pa uh, in, the, in the passage here. Um, jingle bell. Verse 17. Throw that up there. 
Yeah, no, uh, Colossians 1.17, I'm sorry, the text, the text. And he is before all things. Well, that tells us he's God. And in him all things, you see that next word? Consist. Now, that's an interesting word in the Greek. It has the idea, it, it, it's like a medical term. It is, it is like a, a um, uh, you know, when something is uh, cut open and they put it together. Now they got tape, you know, if it's not real. I don't know. They, I, I'm not smart enough to tell you. But they got, or they sew it up. Remember when they used to sew it up? I mean, I got a scar like that at the base of my spine where I fell off the back porch onto my little sister's baby food jar. And I can see where the old Dr. Pew put in, you know, I got dot, 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 dot. There's 11 dots up there and there's 11 dots down there. And I was five years old. Now that thing looks like, well, never mind what it looks like. <laughs> but he put me back together after he dug out all the, the glass, you know. And he put it all together and he sewed it up. And I wasn't cooperating real good. And all of a sudden, this big rag coming on my face. And I went to, I went to ether land. <laughs> and when I woke up, I couldn't hardly wake up. Because I must have been rambunctious. But when I finally come to, I heard him talking to my mother. And Virginia Bailey, it was our next door neighbor, you know. She helped, never mind. And we, boom, went 27 miles to Depew Hospital. One way. On Route 36, and if you've ever been out there, yeah, there's more curves. We just go out of one curve into another. And we got there, and he sewed me up. And he was saying, and he used a word that uh, I didn't understand what it meant. You know, what does five-year-olds know about cohesiveness? cohesiveness, you know, for something to, you know, he, he says, I, I, I think I got all the glass out and everything and da, 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 and, and all this, you know, and, I, and, and it looks good and uh, let's keep him overnight and or two and, you know, and all that other stuff. And, uh, but cohesiveness, you know, when you put something together, you know, like your, your DNA strand, you know that thing that, that they say we all have? There's a cohesion process there, and everybody's is different. I don't care if you've got the same mother and daddy. It's all different. But God put it together in a cohesive way. It consists the way it's designed. You know, I got blue eyes, and some of you don't. Bless your heart. Uh, you know, and some of you got green eyes. And some of you, your hair's blonde or red or brown or black. And You know, all that comes out of that. Jesus is the one who created it all, and he holds it all together. He is the creator. He is the creator. Now, I've had people say, oh, I, believe, I believe Jesus is a good man. He might even be God, but he didn't create all this. You know, the Big Bang. Well, where'd the Big Bang come from? Who banged? Who was big and banged that thing? I mean, you understand? I don't know how God, I just know he said, let there be light. And bang! There was light. And he's the one that holds it all together. Do you hear what I'm saying? He holds it all together. Jesus is God. And Jesus is the creator. Jesus is the creator. And everything consists through him. That's who came down and became a little bitty baby, born in a, in a uh, 
we call it a barn. It was a cave, a cave with some boards up. You know, it's funny. We call it an inn. We think, oh, well, they went down there to the Red Roof Inn. No, no. The fellow who had these holes in the, in, in the, in the earth and, fill, and pin them up, he had, he had a room to let. And people coming through, you know, they said, well, we got our animals here. And, okay, you can put your animals over there. And here's a mat, and you guys can bed down over there. And sometimes we think, oh, that innkeeper, he was so mean and nasty. Nothing could be further from the truth. When, when Joseph came and said, we, we need a room, he says, I, can, I don't have a place. Uh, that, there, there's nothing but men in there, and that's no fit place for a woman to give birth. He says, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll put you over here where their animals are. At least you can have some privacy. And any woman who ever gave birth says, Hallelujah. <laughs> so it wasn't that he was mean and nasty and cold and cruel. He was actually very compassionate. And put them aside, put Joseph and Mary aside where all these men are. You know, that's the room. Who knows how many men were in there? Half a dozen? A dozen? I mean, the place was packed. Everybody had to come, pay taxes. And he put them over here with the animals. And a feed trough was Jesus' first bed. Oh, my friends. God, who is the creator came down and was born in such a humble place, in such a humble fashion, how can we not love him and come under the authority of his word and serve him? How could we not? How could we not? And lastly, Jesus is God. I believe that with all my heart. Not backing up from that. If you don't believe Jesus is God, you need to get saved. Jesus is creator. I believe that with all my heart because the inerrant word of God, the inspired word of God, this God-breathed book tells me that he is the creator. You say, I don't believe that. Then you need to get saved today. And then lastly, Jesus is the Savior. He is the Savior. Verse 18 declares he's the head. Uh, or, um, hmm. Luke 19.10 says, For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Now, I want you to understand that Jesus is seeking to restore everything that Adam lost. You see, he wants people to have a personal relationship with him. It's a personal relationship. You can't have a relationship through mother or daddy. It's got to be yours. You can't have it through grandma or grandpa. It has to be yours. It has to be personal. You can't. It's... Listen, God is not a grandpa. I'm a grandpa. Man, it's fun, too. I mean, after being around grandkids, you wish you'd have started there first. <laughs> but you can't get grandkids that way. you got to have the kids. And then they have the kids. And, you know, it's funny how that works, isn't it? <laughs> God is so good. He is the Savior. i got four grandkids and not a one of them saved yet. They're going to be. Say, how do you know? Because I'm confessing it and I'm believing it and I'm speaking it. I'm not going to speak death. I'm not going to curse them. 
I'm going to speak life into their little lives. Bless God. Jesus is the Savior. In, in chapter 1, verse 18 of our text in Colossians, the Bible says this. He is the head of the body, the church. Now, the church he's speaking of is not a denomination. It's not Baptist. It's not Pentecostal. It's not Lutheran. It's not Episcopal. It's not Eastern Orthodox. It's not Roman Catholic. That's not what he's saying. He's talking about this called out body of believers that transcends all man-made denominational division. Everyone. He is the head of the church, the born-again, blood-washed body who is the beginning. He's my beginning. Why is that? He is the firstborn from the dead, never to die again. You see, that's why I say, I had a fellow say, ask me one time, well, how long you, you, got, you say you're saved? I said, I, yeah. Well, hmm? oh, how long are you going to live? I'm going to live as long as Jesus lives. Amen. That's how long I'm going to live. As long as Jesus lives. That, he gave me his life. Now, if he could ever die, then I'm in trouble. Again, if he could stop, if he, if he, but you see, he's God and he's creator and he's my savior. That in all things, all things, he might have the preeminence. Now, what's that mean? Preeminence, you know, I remember one time I used that word and I had a woman come up to me after the service, not here, it was another place. What's that mean? Do I need to start bringing a dictionary to church? I, I said, well, <clears throat> he's first in everything. He's, he sits on the throne of my heart. Not, not my job, not my spouse, not my children, not my grandchildren, not my, uh, my hobbies. Listen, I'm a baseball fiend, but God's delivered me. Kind of. I mean, if it's on, I want to watch it. I just love it. I mean, I could, I, could, I, could, I could just go down there to watch the Nats play every time they're home. I can't, couldn't afford it. But I could. I really could. But I don't. I don't. Because I know what a, an allure it has for me. And, I, and that's kind of a generational thing for my family. You know? I mean, do you realize that they started, they played baseball during the Civil War. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. That he might have the preeminence. Now, I thank God. I thank God for the education you have, the, the job you have, the family you have, the vocation, the business. All the, I thank God. That's where they come from. You need to acknowledge that, but give him the preeminence in all of it. Can you say amen? amen? Give him the preeminence. Why? Because he's my Savior. Why is that important? Well, you see, nobody could keep me out of hell but Jesus. No one could forgive me of my sins but Jesus. No one could put his spirit in me but Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying? He's my Savior. He's the reason I, I live. He's the reason why I walk. He's the reason why I witness. He's the reason why I go on mission trips. He's the reason why we have special meetings to get people to come in to hear great preachers preach. Because He is my preeminent one. Oh, yeah, that's the way it works. He's, he's why I tithe. I don't tithe because my preacher a long time ago made me feel guilty. If I didn't, well, he did a little. But you see, when I saw it in the Word, I knew that I was contending with God and not my preacher. 
You see, that's why I want to, I want to see, you know, and we pour into uh, 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 the young adults and the, and the high school, and middle school, and children, the, the elementary school and the preschool. Why do we do that? Why do we invest in that? Because, you see, you and I aren't going to be here forever. And we got to hand this thing off. We got to hand it off. We've got to do that. And if we don't, what's going to happen when you and I die? Huh? I mean, my goodness. Uh, Greenway Fellowship, this is, the, this is a church. This is not a museum or a mausoleum. Amen? We want to get lost people saved and save people discipled and strengthened, get them baptized and get them in gear and turn them loose. Amen? Jesus, he's our God and our Savior. And I want to ask you today, do you know him? You know, in this day and time that we live in, with all this, the radicals, you know, radical Islam, uh, there's even attacks by radical people who have an alternative lifestyle, you know? Can I tell you, the Lord loves every Muslim and every homosexual. Can I tell you that? He'll save everybody that'll come to him. We're not against Muslims and we're not against homosexuals. Jesus died for their sin. And he'll save them and, and, and change them. He did me. He, if you're saved, he did you. But I want to ask you something. Say some, some crazy fella, for whatever reason, broke through our safety net that we have at this place and come in here and started shooting. Say, oh, that couldn't happen. Oh, yes, it can. Don't be so naive. This is the 21st century. And a bullet found you. And a way you depart. Who are you trusting? Is it heaven? Or is it not? I want to encourage you today, before we take the Lord's Supper, if you've not truly been born again, if you've not truly been saved, you don't have that assurance and that confidence, asking, asking sincerely from your heart, Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. Come into my heart and save me for Christ's sake. Now, I know Christians make mistakes. I understand that. But I'm talking about being genuinely born again. My goodness, Christians need to deal, keep their accounts short every, every day just to stay in fellowship. I know one thing. If I went one day without talking to my sweetie babe, we'd be out of fellowship. Oh, we're still married. We still live at the same address. But boy, it'd be like walking into a freezer. <laughs> I still got the ring on my finger. I'm her husband. She's my wife. But the fellowship can be in, in not good. We need to deal with that promptly. But I'm talking about knowing that you've passed from death unto life. Knowing that whenever it stops, you know, whenever it stops. Some people don't have a deathbed. Some people have death automobiles. Or death accidents on the job or... I mean, you understand? Whenever the death angel comes, are you trusting Christ? If you're not, please trust him today. 
Let's bow our heads.